Hi there! Lori here and we are in the kitchen on Vancouver Island and we are making ground cherry jelly. How's it going? Lori here on Vancouver Island. Welcome back to my world. Or if it's your first time here, welcome to my world. I have harvested my ground cherries for the last month or so, as I have told you. And they've been stored in the fridge. And so today I'm going to make me some ground cherry jelly. <laughs> There's Tabby right on cue, right? Yeah, so anyway, today I'm going to be making some ground cherry jelly. And of course, it's the first time I've ever made ground, ground cherry jelly because it's the first time I've ever tried ground cherries. So it's also actually the first time I've ever made jelly. I've made jam a couple times, but this is going to be a first as well. So thanks so much for popping in and thanks for coming to hang out and thanks for being a subscriber, you guys. I love all of you so, so much and thank you. <laughs> anyway, let's get to it. So I ended up with 2.8 pounds of ground cherries, which isn't a whole lot, but I think I'm going to make a jam anyway. So the first step, of course, is going to be pulling these all out of their husks. So I'm going to go do that, and then we'll be back and we'll make some jam. Okay, so considering they've been sitting in the fridge for some of them up to a month I actually didn't lose that many there were a few that were kind of gross one nice thing is when you're taking the husk off if it's gross you can tell right away so you don't have to go all the way down I'm just gonna give these a quick rinse and then I'm going to get them into a pot and we're gonna cover them with water and let them cook down for about an hour Okay, so I ended up having about six cups. And we're going to just cover them with water. And I'm gonna bring that up to a boil. And then once it boils, I'm gonna turn it down and let it simmer for about an hour. And then I will be back. I'm pretty sure I put a little bit too much water in here, but now that this has turned into juice, I don't want to drain it out, so I am just going to let this cook down for another half hour or so. And then I'm going to come in here with my immersion blender, and then I will add my sugar and my not pectin. <laughs> so I zipped it up with my, um, I cooked it for about an hour. And then I just went in there with my immersion blender and turned it into... Um, kind of a jelly. It has seeds. I wonder if I should strain it. I think I probably should because Dave doesn't like seeds. So I'm going to do that. Can you see those? Little tiny seeds. So I'm going to get a strainer and strain those out and then we will move on to the next step. Okay, so I've strained my juice and it looks much better now. And so I have, I don't know, about four, four and a half cups. And I have to tell you guys, I, I have not made a lot of jelly in my day. <laughs> um, this is like the third time I've ever attempted to make jelly. And I don't really have the amounts that the people, like I found a few recipes online that I watched but I don't have the same measurements as they had, so I'm kind of winging it. Um, <laughs> I've got my juice on here, and it is going to come back to a bubble. I'm going to add... Uh-oh, if I can. What, Tabby? <laughs> she gets so mad when I talk to you guys. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to add two tablespoons of lemon juice. 
to add some acidity. And then I'm going to add a whole bunch of sugar. Like I'm gonna add about four cups, I think, or three cups anyway. And then here's something else that I'm gonna do that I don't know if it'll work or not. So I've heard that there are ways that you can um, thicken your jelly without using an actual pectin. I have here an apple powder that I made a couple of weeks back and I'm going to try adding some of this to my jelly and see if it thickens up. I think that the worst that can happen is I end up with syrup which won't be too bad. We, we like pancakes so <laughs> we can do pancakes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my sugar added in here. One. I'll cut this out so you guys don't have to watch. Two. <laughs> and three. And that should be good. Scrape this all out of here. Okay, and then I think, I think I'm going to put like a quarter cup of this apple pectin in. That's what I'm calling it. My apple, my homemade apple powder. It's powder. I don't know. I'm hoping it will act similarly to a pectin. And that I can get some jelly out of this. Or, you know, barring that, maybe I can get some... Something, something. <laughs> but I'm going to bring this up to a bubble and, oh, and then I'll be back. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I've got these little chunks. You can see them. I've got like chunks of apple floating on top here. I'm going to let it simmer for a little while and see if maybe they dissolve. I'm hoping that they will. Um, and, and then I'll come back. I don't know, I might have to strain it again. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. So my jelly seems like it's turned out from what I know about jelly. I'm going to scrape this white goop off of it because I don't know what it is. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to scrape it off. Uh, and then I'm actually going to remove this from the heat. <laughs> These are some Madagascar vanilla beans, which have been soaking in vodka for probably about six weeks now. And I've got other ones sitting as well, but this one seems to be, um, well, it's the only one that I can really use out of. Mm, it smells good though. It smells like vanilla and not alcohol. So I'm going to put a teaspoon of that in there and stir it around and then my jars have been over here in my pressure canner for boiling away for 15 minutes and so I'm going to get those out and into here and then we're going to go to work filling up the jars and yeah I'll talk to you when that is done. Clean off my rims with a napkin and I've dumped it in some vinegar Just trying to get anything off the rim that might interfere with the seal. And I'm only going to put the five in. I'm doing a water bath can. So if you are unfamiliar, ah, that was <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> oh, man. Well, maybe I have two that are going in the fridge. Shoot. So I do have to tell you guys, I am not a canner. I am just learning how to can. 
and this is the only canner that I have ever used is this Nesco pressure canner and it does both pressure canning and water bath canning and today I'm going to use it as a water bath canner and I will walk you through the steps of that first of all I had hit um, the, the brown button here and started it and that brought my water up to a boil and I boiled my jars for 15 minutes to sterilize them and then I took them out and I filled them with my hot jelly. Now we're going to try and put the lids on. And there we go. And we'll put this on. And we'll go just finger tight. And I'm going to get lids on all of these. So as I was saying, I am not somebody who knows how to can. I am just barely learning how to can myself. So uh, I would recommend if you're thinking about canning, it's not as difficult as you might think. I was really freaked out about it before I started doing it, but it's turned out to be quite a bit easier than I thought it was going to be. And although I have had some things not turn out and I've had some that didn't seal and I've had some problems with some weird German lids that I bought. Um, you know, other than that, it's been a relatively easy process to learn. Um, I'm a little leery still of pressure canning just because... I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'm much more comfortable at this point with water bath canning. And one thing about water bath canning is any pot that's big enough to cover your jars by an inch, um, an inch to an inch and a half, is big enough to be able to water bath can in. Um, you want to put something in the bottom of it to make sure that your jars aren't resting right on the bottom and stuff like that. But I recommend you do some research. There's a lot of professional canners around here. Even on this list, this hashtag Let's Can list, there's a lot of really good canners on this list who really know what they're doing. Um, and I would recommend that you, one of them being, um, of course, Peggy from Page Family Homestead, she is a phenomenal canner. And then there's Sue here from Morris Little Patch of Heaven. She is also a great canner. Um, I haven't watched too many others, but there are some great videos out there that of people who are doing canning. And then I also recommend that you get yourself a book, a canning book, um, at the very least on your Kindle. I've got a couple of them on my Kindle. And then when you are canning, try to follow recipes. Like, which of course, obviously I didn't do with this. Well, I, I mean, I kind of did. I followed a basic fruit jelly recipe, which is so much sugar, so much lemon juice, so much fruit. So as you can see, I'm actually gonna pull out some water because I have way more than an inch and I'm over my full line in here and that's one thing is I can really only water bath can in this the largest cans are um, the little half pint cans I've done some pint size cans in here and unless they're the short fat ones I don't they can't fit in here properly to be, be properly covered and not spew water all over the counter so yeah but these smaller jars especially for jams and jelly this works just fine so there's those in there I'm going to bring this closed and I'm going to switch it over here to close I'm going to make sure that my button here is on exhaust. And here again, I'm going to hit water bath on my Nesco. And then I'm going to adjust my time. And I'm going 15 minutes. And I'm going to hit start. So now that's how easy it is to get the Nesco started. 
But once I'm going to watch here for my steam to start coming out, and then once my steam, and it's that steady stream of steam again, I'm getting better at saying that quickly. Try it, steady stream of steam, steady stream of steam. <laughs> anyway, once I have a steady stream of steam out of here, I am going to hit my start button again, and that is then going to start my countdown for my water bath canner. So there is my steam going from bubbling to steady. So now that I have a steady stream of steam, I am going to hit my start stop button again. And that's now going to count down my 15 minutes for my water bath canning. And like I said, you'll want to do your own research and do what is best for your kitchen. This is what works for mine. And let's just hope that my jelly turns out. When I first tasted it, it was a little too sweet, but then when I last tasted it, it was pretty tart. It was almost like a sweet and sour sauce. So that could be good. Ground cherry sweet and sour sauce. <laughs> How the heck did I do that? Oh, we just flipped from one to off. <laughs> I caught it just in time. So this has been spouting that steady stream of steam for the last 15 minutes. And you can hear the water bubbling away inside of there. So. I know that I have done a good job of preserving it with a water bath can. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to unplug it now. And I'm going to wait until it starts steaming and then I will get my jelly out. Up steaming and I'm going to go ahead and open this. Because I'm going to step back out of the way and open it away from me because it's going to be steamy steamy and I'm going to try to get my jars out of here without dumping any of them <sighs> da, 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 da. and there we have it I'm gonna wait and see if they pop and let this sit and cool and then I think I'm almost done for the night it's 10 30 so it should be time That's three, four. Come on, baby, make it five. Maybe not. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Yay, we got five pops. That is always exciting. I know I'm new at this, but I hear that, that 20 years from now, I'll still be excited over the pop. And uh, yeah, this is fabulous. Yay! So I'm going to leave those sit there overnight. And we'll take a look in the morning to see if they've gelled. Um, and then we'll taste the one in the fridge to see if it is, in fact, a sweet and sour sauce <laughs> instead of a jelly. It was a little tart, so it might work really nicely as a sweet and sour sauce. Um, anyway, I'll be back in the morning and we'll chat again for a minute before I start editing this video and getting it ready to show you guys. Uh-oh, you need to pause that. Okay. What now? That looks scary. It's cold. I get a spoon. Don't you, take very much. You try it first. I've tried it already. And you didn't die? I didn't die. Okay. Why can't I take Well, you take much? as much as you want. What is it? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Another experiment. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> But go ahead, eat it anyway. <laughs> that gives me a, a lot of confidence. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be jelly. 
but I think it tastes more like a sweet and sour sauce. Like, wouldn't that be good on an egg roll? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. That's good. It would be good on toast. You think so? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's very sweet, though. Yeah. Those cherry... That, those Plus cherry the ground cherries, cherries yeah. That we were doing the other day. Yeah. I think they are pretty sweet to begin with. Yeah, I might have maybe put too much sugar in there. Um, you probably put what the... Oh, you what don't the, follow recipes. <laughs> well, I couldn't really find a recipe that suited what I had. The one recipe that I saw... The guy had seven cups of ground cherries, and he put in five cups of sugar. Mm -hmm. So. Did you put in that much sugar? No, but I, I had four cups of ground cherries. Um, See, I keep licking my spoon clean. <laughs> I don't want that. Well, I don't want it. What am I well, I'm busy. You bring it into the kitchen the next time you come. What, what hand am I supposed to take it in? Right. Open <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm coming in here with video. For what? I want you to taste this. Why? That's the jelly I made. Yeah. That was... You look like snot. <laughs> Don't stick your spoon in there again now that you licked it. I won't. <laughs> you can lick your spoon clean, though. Yeah. I thought it tasted almost like a sweet and sour sauce. Kind of. Kind of? Yeah. It's sweet. More sweet than... Than sour. There's no sour in it at all. You don't think so? No. Oh, okay. Is it too sweet? Might be. Yeah, it's a little sweet, right? Well, probably for you, it really is way too sweet. Well, I might mix it with a little vinegar and make it into a sweet and sour. Instead of jam. Instead of jam. Well, just when I open the individual, you know, maybe for myself, or maybe I'll do that and make Chinese food or something. I mean, if you the sweetness, you can somehow cut that out a little bit down. Yeah. It'd probably be okay for jelly, but it's really real sweet. You put too much that on you, you can get a sugar eye. Yeah, you wouldn't want too much. What are you whining about back there? But yeah, I couldn't really find a recipe that went with the quantities that I had, so I had to kind of improvise. Mm -hmm. And then I put, I used apple pectin, or apple, instead of like regular pectin to make it thick. Oh well, yeah, now, now you're in a completely different language than I am. <laughs> You're in a different world. I don't know any of that. Pectin or whatever. No. Okay. Okay, I'm leaving you now. I just, <laughs> all right. Thank you for tasting. You're welcome. <laughs> well, there you have my taste test. So I have... I honestly, I think it tastes more like a sweet and sour sauce. And these guys are saying it's a little too sweet. It's really sweet. Yeah, gosh, it's uh, it's delicious. It is delicious, but it's very sweet. I could see using it for a variety of things. I could see putting some in my tea and melting that a little bit. I could see adding a little bit of apple cider vinegar to it, and it would make a fabulous sweet and sour sauce. But these are my jars. They all sealed. Look at that, look at that. And so I'm gonna wipe these down and label them and put them into my pantry. And then as I use them up, that will decide what I do with them. Today's video shout out goes to another one of my dear friends who has been a subscriber since way back when. And I know a lot of, I didn't gain a lot of subscribers the first several months that I was doing a YouTube channel. And that these ladies are just all so dear to me because they supported my artwork, they supported my channel. And when I made the switch from doing strictly artwork to coming and chatting more with you and expanding my channel content, they stuck with me and they came with me. And 
And yeah, I just appreciate them. So acrylic pouring by Maria for you. And Maria is a lovely artist. She does a lot of pouring as well. Of course, that's the kind of art I'm into, right? So that's where I was first drawn to, was to these other fellow pouring artists. Maria lives over in the Netherlands with her wonderful husband, Lou, and she is a fantastic supporter and a great friend. And thank you, Maria. I'm going to leave your link um, down in the description, and I'll put a little card up here, wherever it's going to go, uh, that has your um, channel on it as well. And thank you for always supporting me and always being there to hang out and watch my videos, and I appreciate you. And guys, if you like the art that I do and you want to see more of it, or you're just into learning how to do some pour painting yourself, definitely go and check out Maria's channel because she is fantastic. Thanks so much for coming and hanging out with me in the kitchen today while I learn how to use my electric smart canner and make some kind of something. <laughs> I know it was supposed to be a jelly, but I could not find a written recipe for ground cherry jelly, and so I just kind of had to wing it. And I, I'm sure it will be fine. It tastes really good. It is a little sweet, but like I said, I think I'll be able to find other ways to use it, and I really cannot wait to try it in a sweet and sour sauce because that is going to be phenomenal. Thanks so much for coming and hanging out with me in the kitchen. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'm so thankful that you're here. And take care of yourself. I will see you soon. Bye now.